Open the podcast bay door as hell. Welcome to episode 37 of Welcome to Geek Town. I'm your host, Kurt Onstead. I've been a proud geek all my life, being into role-playing games, board games, sci-fi, fantasy, and especially superheroes and comics. And I want to help others join me in those pursuits. But I've found that sometimes people can get overwhelmed or feel left out because they don't already have what some consider the requisite knowledge to be considered a fan. And that's where Welcome to Geek Town comes in. Here, you can ask your questions without feeling like a gatekeeper is calling you out for not yet being fully versed in every aspect of your new interest. This week's topic was not submitted by a listener, but simply a fun idea I decided to cover myself. I do prefer to answer listener questions, so please send them in to welcome to Geek Town, all spelled out, at gmail.com. Or, if you want to submit anonymously, go to www.welcome to, the number two in this case, geektown.com and click Submit a Question and fill out the form there. I look forward to hearing from you. This time, we're talking about Superman's best-known weakness, kryptonite. It's so well-known that people will talk about something being their kryptonite in regular conversation and everyone understands what that means. However, there are over a score of varieties of the famous mineral. Let's go through the different types and see how they affect the Man of Steel and others, as well as a little history of the fictional element. Before we get started, I'm going to talk a lot about pre-crisis versus post-crisis in this episode. Long story short, Crisis is where DC revamped the history of their characters, and so certain varieties of kryptonite act differently depending on the time period. If these terms are confusing and you want some more detail on this, go back all the way to the beginning of Welcome to Geek Town. Episode 1 talks about Crisis, as well as the other hard and soft reboots of the DC Universe. All cut up now? Great, let's talk kryptonite. Like a number of other aspects of Superman's history, kryptonite was not introduced in the comic, but first appeared in the radio serial, The Adventures of Superman. The June 1943 episode titled The Meteor from Krypton introduced the strange rock from his exploded homeworld that could incapacitate Superman. Three years later, in Superman number 61, kryptonite was brought into the comics. Although it was originally colored red, two years later it was turned green, and since it exhibited the same properties, I'm considering this to be the same type of kryptonite. This is the version of kryptonite that most people think of when they hear the word. Exposure to the radiation emitted by this rock makes Kryptonians like Superman, Supergirl, and others physically weak to the point of collapse, slowly but surely knocking them out and eventually killing them. While under the effects of kryptonite poisoning, we usually see Superman's blood and or skin turn green. It doesn't remove their other powers, including invulnerability, so if you're thinking of giving Superman a kryptonite rock, then shooting him to kill him quickly, you're out of luck. Side note, please don't try to kill Superman. He's a good guy. In the pre-crisis world, green kryptonite has no effect on human beings. However, post-crisis, we find that since kryptonite is a radioactive substance, albeit with a very specific radioactive frequency, prolonged exposure can cause cancer in humans, as Lex Luthor finds out the hard way. 
Green K, a nickname used in the comics, is the most plentiful version found on Earth, especially pre-crisis, to the point where not just supervillains had access to the dangerous material, but even regular bank robbers would keep some on them in case Superman showed up to foil their robbery. In the early 1970s, the editors at DC decided to change that in a story titled Kryptonite Nevermore, in which all green K on Earth is transmuted into regular iron. Six years later, a new meteorite landed on Earth, and kryptonite was once again a threat for Superman, but not nearly as prevalent as it had become in the Silver Age. The next most famous variety of kryptonite is Red K. If you've watched Smallville, you may be familiar with its properties on that show, where Clark would lose his inhibitions and turn selfish. In the comic, however, it's very different. Actually, very different is an accurate description in a few ways. As every chunk of red kryptonite affects Superman, or other Kryptonians, in a unique manner. Each time he's exposed to a new piece of the Crimson Rock, a new transformation will take place. This plot device has been used for some of the sillier stories of the Silver Age, including Superman getting ant-like antennas on his head, growing to giant size and acting like King Kong, and losing his powers in the left half of his body. Crypto the Superdog was on the other side of the meteor and lost his powers in the right half of his body. Depending on who was writing the issue, these effects either last exactly 24 hours or will last up to three days. In every case, the initial effects are non-fatal, but could render Superman into a state where he could be killed. But mostly this was used for more comical purposes than any serious story. In post-crisis continuity, Red K wasn't introduced until the 1990s, in a story that specifically called back to previous iterations of Superman, including the Silver Age version. A synthetic version of Red K was created by Batman, then that was stolen and used by Ra's al Ghul in the 2000s JLA story titled Tower of Babel. The artificial version rendered Superman helpless by turning his skin translucent, which made him absorb even more sunlight, overpowering his abilities to the point of not being able to control them. So, those are the two most common flavors of kryptonite. But what about those rare one-time varieties? We'll discuss those right after this. There are a lot of ways you can listen to Welcome to Geek Town. But did you know that you can actually get paid just for listening to this or almost any of your other favorite podcasts? I recently found out about this free app called Podcoin, and it literally pays you to listen to podcasts. Here's how it works. You listen to podcasts, and you earn Podcoin while you listen. Then you turn that Podcoin in for gift cards at places like Amazon or Starbucks. Or if you're feeling generous, you could even donate that Podcoin to charity. The more you listen the more you earn. Just download the app right now on iPhone or Android and use the sign-up code GEEKTOWN and you'll get 300 bonus PodCoin just for signing up. Keep listening and eventually you'll earn enough PodCoin to get a cappuccino at Starbucks or an Amazon gift card worth a few bucks. So go ahead and go listen to this podcast on PodCoin and sign up with the code Geek Town. Thanks. And now, back to the show. Now we get into the more rare and much lesser known types of kryptonite. The majority of these have only been used for one or two stories, and like Red K, are mostly artifacts of the Silver Age. Blue kryptonite, 
affects bizarro creatures the same way Green K affects Superman and other Kryptonians. Gold Kryptonite can permanently and irreversibly remove a Kryptonian's powers. Naturally, this has only been used in quote-unquote imaginary stories, the term used back in the Silver Age for non-canonical stories, but has shown up as a potential threat in canon. Gold K has also been one of the ingredients in some of the varying kryptonite alloys. Red-green kryptonite has shown up twice, once causing Superman to grow a third eye in the back of his head, the other time removing his powers similar to Gold K. He got better by the end of the story, obviously. Red-gold kryptonite temporarily turns Superman into an amnesiac, and red-green-gold does the same, but is permanent and also removes his powers. This is an imaginary story version never seen in canon. The final alloy is red-green-blue-gold, combining all four that we've discussed so far. This was used in the famous imaginary story Superman Red slash Superman Blue, in which Superman was split into two during an accident with this stone powering an intelligence-enhancing device. Both Superman Red and Blue received the enhancement to their IQ, which they used to solve many long-standing problems, and at the end of the issue, permanently stayed split, each happily married to one of their longtime suitors. Red marries Lois, while Blue weds Lana Lang. That tale was homaged in the late 90s when Superman was changed to an energy being temporarily, which was also split in two. Now, there are only two colors of kryptonite left from the Silver Age. White, which killed all plant life it was exposed to, and, appropriately enough for the Silver Age, silver. This last one is an interesting case because in the original Silver Age story, silver kryptonite ends up being a hoax and doesn't actually exist. However, post-crisis, Silver K was introduced as a real type of kryptonite, and it causes Superman and his fellow Kryptonians to suffer from paranoid delusions. The effects of post-crisis Silver K are based on the silver kryptonite scene in Season 5 of Smallville, another instance of the comics taking from other media and adding it into the official canon. I should also mention a version of kryptonite here that was created post-crisis, but was set on a pre-crisis-like Earth. In Supergirl number 79, released in April 2003, on an alternate Earth, we see a Superman under the influence of pink kryptonite. This rock causes him to act like a very stereotypical portrayal of a gay man, and he is seen hitting on Jimmy Olsen. This one-panel gag, satirizing the various Silver Age kryptonite stories, was written by Peter David, and it definitely hasn't aged well, but the list would technically be incomplete without it. There are a few varieties of kryptonite not named for their color, but some other property instead. Jewel kryptonite is rock that is specifically from the Jewel Mountains of Krypton. It imbues Phantom Zone criminals with psychic powers, allowing them to project illusions and mind control people outside of the Phantom Zone. Magno kryptonite is magnetically attracted to anything that originally came from Krypton, making it the perfect dowsing rod for finding other kryptonite pieces. X kryptonite was what gave Streaky the Super Cat her powers, but should not be confused with the post crisis Kryptonite X, which is the unique isotope that recharged Superman's powers after his death. Check out episode 15 regarding the death of Superman and his replacements for more details on that. Finally, anti-kryptonite, slow kryptonite, and bizarro red kryptonite are three versions introduced at various points 
within a 20 year time frame all have the same effect, which is to hurt and eventually kill humans the same way that green K affects Kryptonians. Anti-Kryptonite shows up once post-crisis in Grant Morrison and Frank Quitely's JLA Earth 2 graphic novel as the power source for Ultraman, the evil Earth 3 equivalent of Superman. Finally, we get to the one color of kryptonite that has only been featured in post-crisis continuity. Black kryptonite. Originally seen in 2005 in Supergirl No. 2, it had the ability to split a kryptonian into two. One good, one evil. A trope seen in many sci-fi and fantasy properties, from Star Trek to Buffy the Vampire Slayer. A modified version of Black Kryptonite is used in the Dark Knight's Metal storyline. In an alternate universe, the Batman Who Laughs, a Joker-Batman hybrid, uses it to render that world's Superman, as well as his son Jonathan, insane, causing them to murder Lois Lane before the Kryptonite poisoning kills them as well. As you can see, this is about as far away from the light and silly Red K storylines as you can get, and something that could only be created in the modern, quote-unquote, adult tales of the 80s and beyond. Those are all of the canonical versions of Kryptonite that I could locate, but there are two others that have appeared in comics outside of regular DC canon. First, we have Orange Kryptonite. Seen in Crypto the Superdog No. 4, based on the short-lived cartoon, this shade gives super abilities to any animal that comes in contact with it. Lastly is Periwinkle Kryptonite, which made an appearance in the Superman Family Adventures No. 9, a book aimed at younger audiences. In this cartoony story, Brainiac shoots a periwinkle kryptonite ray at the Man of Steel, who falls from the sky, then immediately seeks out Lois Lane and proceeds to dance with her until the effects wear off. The punchline to this story is that Lois, wanting more personal attention from Superman, finds more periwinkle K to expose Superman to whenever she feels like another dance. So, I'm pretty sure I covered every published version of Kryptonite out there, as well as probably setting some sort of record for saying the word Kryptonite the most times in a 15-minute time period. But, if you think I missed out on something, let me know. Or, if there's another aspect of comics lore you'd like to know more about, please, ask away. You can send an email to welcome to Geektown, all spelled out, at gmail.com or fill out the submission form at www.welcome to, number two in this case, geektown.com if you want to be anonymous in your topic request. Other contact options include facebook.com slash welcome to geektown or twitter at geektown podcast. Also, if you'd like to support the show directly, come join the Patreon at patreon.com slash welcome to geektown for just a dollar per month to get access to full scripts of the shows, outtakes, and a monthly shout-out. You can also help the show grow by subscribing and giving a five-star review over on Apple Podcasts to join the Geek Town City Council, which helps other people find the show. So we can all tell them, welcome to Geek Town, population, us. Welcome to Geek Town is written, narrated, edited, and produced by me, Kurt Lansky. The music is by Aaron Lovitz, logo art by Archie Santana. All other sound clips are the copyright material of their respective owners, and no infringement is intended. Follow.